Hey y'all, welcome to today's show. Um, we'll get into, um, well at least we'll cover turmeric, maybe another herb as, as well today. Um, we're still working through our series of the culinary herbs that you can grow in your garden um, that also have great medicinal properties. <clears throat> I've still got uh, some <clears throat> bronchitis I'm dealing with, and yes, I'm treating it with herbs, and um, probably actually that RSV virus, because a lot of people around here have gotten like really sick and been hospitalized with it, and I'm just using thyme and, and turmeric and, and other good herbs, oregano and such, and um, you know, uh, I'm surviving it, but my voice is not good, and I probably sound a little tired, in fact, what you may, may be hearing more than that is frustration. <laughs> There is a whole different level of like really serious frustration uh, for someone who is a woodworker, or I guess really if you work with your hands in any way, and um, something just falls apart at the last minute. You know, I'm sure everybody's experienced this. I just spent about 12 hours over, um, I guess, four days. I was carving about three hours a day just using a knife and a chisel. Uh, I axed out the shape of a big, a really big, this would have been a centerpiece um, dough bowl, trough style bowl, out of wild cherry, which is not that easy to come by. Um, probably could have sold it for oh, around $200 minimum, $250, you know. So definitely worth it to put in the time, uh, but I'm just using... Uh, other than the axe, you know, um, a sloyd style knife and a gouge. So your hands get blistered, they get tired, um, swollen even. Right now I can't even really make a fist with my right hand. Um, spent about a good 12 hours, maybe even longer on it. And one slip. <laughs> I had this, you know, beautiful, just, I mean, nice thin walls, delicate curved handles on the end. Once I oiled it, man, that thing, I mean, literally, it's the kind of piece that would have probably shown up, could have shown up in an antique store a um, hundred or two hundred years from now and, um, you know, really sold for thousands of dollars or been or a really nice family heirloom. One slip and I punch right through the bottom. There's nothing you can do with a bowl carved from a solid piece of wood that you've punched a hole through the bottom. <laughs> oh yeah, I about lost it. Uh, definitely some profanity was used. Um, wow, yeah, I am, I'm, I'm fit to be tied, as they used to say. <laughs> but you know, I um, got a, a nice email from James here at the uh, <clears throat> Prepper Broadcasting Network. He's going to include my books in the um, the Christmas sale, the Black Friday um, display of. Things that we brought, Pepper Broadcasters have offering, um, or are offering, I guess I should say. And as I always say, I'd love to be under your Christmas tree. Whether it's um, one of my books, a spoon, a basket, you know, my woodworks and crafts, or a subscription to my Substack newsletter. Remember me when you're buying Christmas gifts. Um, you know, they, it, it, I think they're good items unique gifts for people that they'll really appreciate um you know even if someone not into to herbs my cookbook everybody loves that um uh, and the spoons you know i've got a beautiful uh, well several actually uh spoons carved out of paper birch for sale right now um cooking spoons a salad set really really uh birch is just one of the prettiest woods and one of the the nicest Birch and cherry are probably the best, which is really why I'm so upset about that bowl because you just don't get a nice piece of wild cherry like that every day. Um, but uh, big enough, you know, for a bowl as, as well. Anyway, do remember me, please, if, if you would, for your Christmas shopping. Now, let's get into the herbs. And remember, all my books are available on Amazon and the woodwork, the spoons, the baskets and all that. That's Judson Carroll, woodcraft.substack.com. So well, let's get into turmeric is where we will start. At least um, turmeric's really popular these days. 
It's actually um, a cousin to both ginger and an herb called galangal. Now, ginger, we've discussed quite a bit. Freshly crushed ginger has wonderful antibiotic and antiviral properties, especially um, for throat infections, anything the juice can actually touch, so mouth and throat infections. It has good uh, immune supportive and, um, oh, it's just, you know, anti-inflammatory and all that when you just eat it. You know, ginger is a really good um, spice. I guess you would call it a spice. I mean, these these, these plants form rhizomes, these roots, and we, and we use those. Um, normally, when we say spice, we're talking seeds uh, of a plant. But ginger is so often used dried and ground. Uh, so is turmeric. Um I'm going to call it a spice. But if you want to get the most benefit out of ginger, you want it fresh. Turmeric is perfectly fine to use dry. And galangal uh, really has more history in herbal medicine. It's a cousin of both ginger and turmeric, but you'll, unless you go to a really specialty herb shop, uh, maybe one that specializes in Indian uh, food, in, in Indian groceries, uh, like from India, I'm not talking, you know, Native American or whatever, um, you might find galangal. But it's like somewhere in between ginger and turmeric, and it was really, really popular in the ancient world, in the Middle Ages especially, far more popular than either ginger or turmeric. I don't even think they, I don't think turmeric really came into common use in uh, Europe before the British colonization of, um, of India. Um, not that it wasn't, it, not that it was unknown. Um, if you were in, you know, ancient Rome or ancient Greece, it may have come in through the, the spice routes. Uh, but for the common, common man, um, ginger really became popularized once the, uh, the British did colonize, um, well, really both India and Spain. And they had all kinds of territories around Malaysia and such where these, you know, these grow. They're hot weather plants. They're a little hard to grow. I grow, uh, I grow them in pots. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, you can absolutely go to the grocery store and buy um, a root of ginger, what they call a hand of ginger, actually. It's a rhizome. Look for one that's got like little green shoots coming up. And it likes uh, a sandy, loose soil. But it works in just potting soil as well. I've done this. And um, put it in there. Keep it moist. I mean, you, you, well, probably not going to do a lot with it actually this time of year. I mean, it's probably just going to sit in your house. Of course, if you're in the southern hemisphere, if you listen to me from Australia or South America, you know, you're coming into, to, uh, what, late spring now. So you might be able to just go ahead and do this right away. But if you're, you know, where I live, <laughs> just keep it um I wouldn't even really water it through the winter. Maybe just a little moisture. And then sit it outside in the spring. It's neither ginger, turmeric, nor galangal are going to sprout until the weather hits at least 80 degrees. And turmeric really won't come up till you hit about 90. I mean, it needs hot weather. So if you don't live where it gets that hot, you're going to have to put it in a sunny window or a greenhouse. Or put a... A frame over it, um, you know, glass or plastic, something to hold in the heat. And then, yeah, it's just going to take off and grow. It's going to grow into a nice, big, attractive plant. It'll have beautiful flowers. If you're in a warm enough environment, I mean, in Florida, people grow this stuff ornamentally. Uh, definitely in South Georgia, you could do it, Alabama. I mean, you know, Arizona, many places. It, but it's got to be hot. And um, doesn't like overwatering. These plants like a uh, fairly dry environment. Just enough moisture to keep them growing. Um, ginger grows a little faster than turmeric. Uh, you might start getting some good roots in the second year off of your ginger plants. Turmeric, you're looking at a good three years before you can start harvesting the rhizomes. That's my experience at least. Um, uh, just the other day, just to see what it looked like, I pulled up a, a second year plant of turmeric. And um, it had, off of the original rhizome, which is about the size of my thumb, you know. It had two little, like, I wouldn't even say pinball size. I'd say like marble-sized knots of, of the next year's rhizome, the next phase of growth as that plant starts to try to reproduce. 
I'm probably not going to harvest any turmeric off that plant for another two years. So, I mean, I'm literally looking at that one as like a five-year um, plant before I'm harvesting turmeric off of it. I think that's about right for turmeric. I, I think ginger is more like a two to three year. But, um, well, generally speaking, I have used larger hands of ginger. So they were actually at a more advanced stage of development when they were planted. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's slow, as slow growing as well. But see, I can go to the grocery store and buy um, you know, fresh whole ginger in the produce section in, in a you know, a food line in rural North Carolina and pay, I don't know, $2 a pound. And that's a lot of ginger for a pound. I mean, I'm going to walk out with a bag of ginger for like two, three, four bucks, you know, and I'm going to use plenty of cooking because I like to cook with ginger. I use some medicinally, but for planting, you know, it's like you're working with seed potatoes. You know, you just buy some potatoes, cut out, cut, cut them up, <laughs> find a good eye and it's going to start growing, right? Uh, turmeric is more expensive and harder to find, at least where I live, in its fresh form. So normally, um, we're, we're probably talking $7 a pound or more for turmeric. Yeah, if not 10 really. And so I'm just going to save one chunk of that rhizome to plant and use the rest in cooking. Because, I mean, it's like wonderful in, in curry. I really do enjoy turmeric. Um, really good stuff. Now, turmeric's really popular these days. You've probably seen it in many forms. The standardized extract of turmeric is the strongest form of turmeric. You'll see that in, like, name brand, you know, turmeric capsules. If you buy a cheap turmeric from, you know, the grocery store, or the, and I mean in capsule form, you know, used as a supplement, the, the you know Dollar General or something, they actually have a, a pretty decent brand of turmeric. Actually, at Dollar General, that's relatively inexpensive, and that's probably the most common way I use turmeric. It's just dried ground up turmeric, the same stuff as you get on the spice aisle, put into a capsule. You can absolutely buy dried ground up turmeric off of your spice aisle and and take it by you know a half teaspoonful at a time, four to a half, you know. Uh, the thing is, turmeric has a very strong yellow-orange pigment in it. And probably the reason people enjoy it more in capsule form is because that stuff will stain your hands like crazy. I mean, you're, you'll are you be walking around with yellow palms. I mean, it's just, it's really very, um, very deep pigment. The reason most people, though, don't get all the benefits from turmeric that they could is because turmeric needs to be combined with two things for your liver to really process it and for you to get its full effect. Black pepper and a natural fat. Uh, basically, I mean, this is really oversimplification, but when you combine turmeric with black pepper, your, your liver processes black pepper just fine. It knows what to do with black pepper. It doesn't really know what to do with turmeric but it sort of mistakes the turmeric as pepper and it processes them both together you you can look at it that way and i know there's a doctor just screaming at me that's not the way it works well you know that's the easiest way to comprehend it okay um the we, we could say the pepper makes the turmeric more bioavailable so does a natural fat any kind of fat olive oil butter i don't care what it is is going to make that turmeric a lot more um, bioavailable. Again, my favorite thing to combine it with is cod liver oil. You know, all fish oil is good and anti-inflammatory, just like turmeric, very good for you. Uh, so ses sesame oil is fantastic. Sesame oil is actually um, very healing to the liver. And if you have any liver issues, a uh, spoonful of sesame oil a day is one of the best things you can do. It's gamma, is it gamma linoleic? I can't remember, but um, yeah, really good. Uh, but cod liver oil is more anti-inflammatory than just plain fish oil, okay? Um, and it, 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 it's not castor oil. It's not going to, you know, send you run to the bathroom. Cod liver oil is actually an oil that comes from the liver of codfish. When you can find it, it's going to be a whole lot cheaper than most fish oil, and actually a whole lot more useful. 
So when you combine your term 